You have a competitor review bombing you. My name is Stephen Pope. I've got a cold and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. In this video, I'm going to walk through those stinky reviews that come in from those competitors and what you can do about it, especially since it's black hat. First, who does this normally is the Chinese. Uh, they actually have multiple paid services we can find on the black interwebs where you can hire people to do this. Um, it's a cultural issue for starters. Uh, it's just one of those things that they do over there to take down their competitors. Uh, this is frequently hitting mostly the U.S. sellers and the U.K. sellers, especially if your address is in the U.S. or in the U.K., They'll, they'll target you even more because they think you don't know how to stop it. They think you are less likely to respond. So that's the why. So here's what I would do about it. Now, the trickiest thing is it's not really easy to tell like um, if it which competitor it is, right? You can click into the review and see some information. So here's some negative reviews here. And one of the competitors is Dr. Squatch. I don't think Dr. Squatch is hiring or doing anything, but if they were, this is how I would go about doing this. I would click on the review and I would also click on the reviewer. Now, if the reviewer has 101 star reviews, that's a pretty good indication that they're an abuser. Now, this guy only has two one stars. Chances are probably not a bad actor, probably just left two one star reviews. Uh, the black hat actors aren't going to go create a thousand seller or buyer accounts, create orders, get the verified purchase and, 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 uh, you know, create lots and lots of accounts. It's just too much work. They're more likely to have an account with like 51 star reviews, 101 star reviews. So if you find that and there's nothing else on there except negative reviews, that's a pretty good indication. So what I would do is I would take this profile link like that. And I would go into Seller Central and I would file a ticket. So we're going to click on help in the top right here. And we're going to try and get help and try and file a case. One of the fun things about seller support is they keep changing the drop down. So if you haven't been in there in a while, you'll notice that they try and give you selected issues. You can scroll to the bottom, say your issue's not listed and type something into the effect of uh, report a seller violation. And got a typo of that one. So let's get that correct and hit continue. And we should see report a violation show up in the recommended, which is good. Click on that. And then in here, you can go to the report abuse section, which brings up an entirely new different section. In this list of report abuse sections, on the very bottom is another seller account is attempting to harm my business. And in here, you can type in your ASIN, the order IDs, if you can locate them, uh, links to specifically the review, if you've got multiple reviews, list them all, the seller, uh, the buyer profile links, um, any information that you can provide here, especially the order IDs, this is going to be really fundamental. Now, the tricky thing is, it's not exactly easy to figure out how to link this person to an order ID. That's going to be one of the biggest challenges, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but sometimes you can get the information through a variety of means. So I'm going to walk you through what I do. First thing I'll do is I'll go over to account health and I'll click on voice of the customer. Now, if you have certain listings that have NCX rates, that maybe they're attacking a key ASIN or something like that. So in here, you'll actually get the customer comments, which can be helpful. So let's see if we can go into a specific one. Uh, we'll pick, let's see, I wanna find one that's got a bunch. This one's got 20 orders, three NCX. That's probably the best one to find details. So we'll click on that. So in here, you can see all the time frames. Sometimes you can match up the time frame to a review date, stuff like that. Here are the order IDs. And chances are, if an NCX has occurred and there's a negative review around the same date, you're going to be able to match them up a little bit better. Um, inside of the order IDs, you can get some customer information. Of course, if somebody is going to take the effort to attack you and place an order, most likely they're going to also do a return order as well. In the ship section, you can see a little bit of customer information, just enough to identify uh, the buyer name. You can even click on the buyer and hit contact here and then select which reason why you want to contact them. Um, if enough time has passed, you'll see a bunch of these grayed out, however. So the reason why I'm showing this as well, because you're going to want to be able to identify who you think these bad actors are. And let's keep in mind that a lot of buyers just leave negative reviews and it's not exactly easy to ascertain 
who the black hat actors are. But again, if you find somebody with 50, 100 negative reviews, pretty good chance they are a bad actor. So having said that, you're gonna file that, that seller case like I mentioned, but in addition to that, I would also recommend sending a cease and desist to the following. The buyer accounts, which you can mention, you can contact here, and going to the seller in question. And if you didn't know this, you can actually contact the seller by going to the listing. Now this only works for 3P sellers or seller central sellers, but you go to the sold by section, which is right under the buy now section, and you can click on the sold name here you can click on the storefront you can also contact or ask a question directly to the seller so if i wanted to send a cease and desist uh, there's a variety of ways i could do that i would recommend doing it directly through amazon as well as sending an email and a letter um, so you can click on ask a question here this will allow you to message them directly and if they're a Chinese seller, good luck trying to find information about them online outside of Amazon. But if they're a legitimate seller, it's much easier to just take that name, go to Google and say, find me an email address. If they're Chinese, good luck, not going to be easy. Um, but those are generally the steps that I would take. Um, and I do want to emphasize that this issue that I'm talking about is real. It is happening. I'm getting dozens of inquiries on this topic. It seems to be increasing in 2024. Um, so I make videos like this to create awareness. And if this was helpful to you, slam that like, add a comment, and you might check out some of these other hijacker videos next. They might be of help to you.